The ocean. Safe to say, probably the most universally unloved area of Ark. But why? Alright folks, my name is Frayne, and today I'll be talking about what I feel are the issues with Ark's oceans, and more importantly, what can be done to improve them? Just how can we make the ocean more appealing to the average survivor? Before we get started with the list though, I'd like to preface it by saying that while I think the oceans are definitely able to be improved, they'll likely only ever remain something players visit from necessity, even on maps as water-focused as the sunken world. And many of these improvements would require a large amount of work, with honestly likely a sadly small impact. With that out of the way though, what can be done to improve them? Well, number 10, reduce the aggression. In some ways, traveling the ocean can be compared to flying through a regular biome. Most of the terrain is beneath you, and you'll pause every now and then to look around and see if you can spot something that might be of interest. Unlike flying, however, almost every single other creature there is aggressive. If you got swarmed by a horde of angry pteranodons every time you paused in flight, it would be no fun at all. But that's what the sea is. Taking a brief moment to stop and check your map results in a pack of megalodons desperate to take a piece out of you. And if you're deep enough, they'll be joined by plessies, moses, anglers, eels. The list goes on. It gets very tiresome very quickly. And to make it worse, very few of them are even aggressive to each other. Honestly, with how much the sea life wants to eat you specifically, and how rarely the average survivor goes for a swim, Everything down there should have died off long ago, and the Ark abandoned spawning them entirely as a futile endeavour. Making some creatures more passive, or perhaps making the aggression drag weight dependent could go a long way. A Mosa wouldn't want to expend the energy on chasing down a human that'll barely sustain it, but ride a Bassy though and you'll be a much more tempting meal. Similarly, there's no reason an angler should be trying to chase down someone on a Tuso, a little more room to breathe for the survivor, especially in the shallower waters, would be a small change with a big effect. Number 9, Lydaria. Yep, an entire creature is in an issue in itself. Obviously, eels are a big nuisance too, but eels can be escaped, or at the very least, you can fight back, albeit slowly. The Nidaria, on the other hand, is a plague that, while not as mobile as most of the other denizens of the deep, are an utter death sentence for anything that gets too close. They're so problematic that for many survivors they reduce the ocean options down to a single tame in the form of a basilo, and 90% of submitted ocean creatures list immune to Nidaria in their profile because without it, it'll be dead on arrival. It wouldn't take a full creature rework or removal to solve this, and there's many ways you could go about it. My suggestion is put a cooldown on the stun attack itself, making the danger more numbers dependent. An individual would cause temporary dismount, but nothing more. A mid-sized group would be a bit trickier, but still fightable unless you get very lucky with the timing, while a large group would be just as dangerous as they are at present. As dangerous as a swarm should be. There's many, many alternatives though, and I honestly am surprised that this has never been addressed. Number 8, General Habitability. Being underwater is incredibly restrictive for basic survival. There's no stamina regeneration or even eating food unless you're sat on something. Obviously, humans are a land-dwelling species, so this makes some sense, but in game terms it further restricts the already very, very few people that ever consider trying to live in the ocean. If you want to build underwater right now, you'll need either tech or a mega kellen to provide you with some sort of long-term oxygen supply. And even if you make it to that stage, you still can't even gather your basic building resources without leaving the water. One of the less impactful improvements on this list, I feel simply due to how few people would be affected by it, but making improvements to this would certainly open up the region for more survivors to consider putting down a flag. Aside from a sprinkling of basic resource nodes and things like enabling a slow stamina regen, one method of improving this could perhaps be the introduction of a primitive, low-strength vacuum compartment, or possibly a pump of some sort to help create airlocks and drain a structure. Now, I can't say living in a wooden shack on the seabed would be my first choice, but there are certainly others for which it holds appeal. Number 7. Ambient Life Real oceans are teeming with life, from large schools of fish to the lively coral reefs or the seabed crawling with crustaceans and bottom-feeding fish. But in Ark, we have none of that. 
just a vast expanse of nothingness between the occasional meg. This isn't really a problem, it doesn't hurt the oceans to be a bit devoid of life, but adding it in would certainly, in my opinion, improve the experience. The first time I ran into a parakeet fishing game, I thought it was a really nice touch on the map. A lovely little visual effect that had been added to give a bit of ambience. It wasn't, of course. They were actually there to serve a purpose. But why can't we have that? As far as performance impact goes, it would be incredibly minor as it wouldn't need to be a complex 3D rendering, just purely visual effects to make it feel more alive. Schools of fish swimming around, little crabs scuttling across the floor. Things far too small for anybody to ever try and kill or tame. But just something small to add a bit of background life to the seas. Number six, flesh out the terrain. Sand and rock. That about sums up the majority of Ark's oceans once you get out of the shallower reefs. There's just nothing down there. I once saw a comment say, if they can make good land biomes, why can't they make a good ocean one? Just build with the same process and then fill it with water instead of air. It's an oversimplification perhaps, but it's fairly accurate really. The land biomes of Ark are well crafted with varied trees and bushes, rocks, grass, random skeletons. There's all sorts there just to make it feel a bit more natural. Some maps have greater ground clutter than others, but the terrain rarely feels empty. The ocean, however, it's just a void of rocks and sand. Obviously, it's not quite that simple, as the ocean is usually quite deep, and that'd be some serious vegetation to fill it out all the way up to the surface, but there's definitely room for improvement, especially on the seafloor. Despite being too shallow to really do anything with, Fjorda's oceans, for instance, manage to rarely feel bland thanks to all the fauna dotted around, and even things as simple as just not having a flat seabed. It's another thing that isn't hugely needed, but would add to the overall feel of the ocean quite well, and wouldn't take a lot of work to achieve. Number 5. Visibility. Visibility underwater can be pretty deceptive. Sometimes it can feel like you can't see 10 feet in front of you, but it's actually just that there's no points of reference to get a real sense of scale. This is further hindered by different maps having a different view distance, perhaps to trick us into thinking the ocean is deeper than it really is. What is certain though is that low visibility not only further contributes to the seas feeling empty, but also to feeling dark, dreary and uninviting. While it is certainly realistic that the depths get darker and darker as you go down, realism isn't always for the best, and poor visibility is often one of the biggest complaints about Ark's waters. Being able to see more of the terrain around you, and especially having more colours pop through, would go a long way to making it generally a less depressing space. Number 4. Navigation Finding your way around on land, especially from the air, is usually pretty easy, unless it's your first time on the map. The obelisks alone can be used as reference points for any travel, and there's always mountains, rivers, lakes, or even just the various biomes to give you a sense of which way you're headed, only really struggling when you're deep, deep in the jungle. The same cannot be said for underwater. A combination of many of the already mentioned issues lead to everything just kind of blending into one. The solution is simple, although time-consuming to implement. Give us some key landmarks that we can use to find our relative position. Things like shipwrecks, sunken ruins, unique rock formations, or even just more huge skeletons of long dead sea monsters. It'll not only help with the navigation, but it'll help diversify the terrain and provide some handy logical loot spots as well. Number three, earlier access. Despite a number of early game tames being present in the water, exploration isn't really a possibility until the late game when scuba comes in at 81. Lazarus Chowder or the rarely seen and even rarer tamed Diplocolis remain options of course, but neither is really a great solution for extended periods of seafaring. From chatting with a few members of my community and the Sunken World team, there's certainly an agreement that this should be altered, and there's a couple of ideas towards this that will divide into two stages. For the first, we need more scuba alternatives. Start early with an oxygen-giving shoulder pet or a primitive diving helmet with limited oxygen. Perhaps some small fins to attach to your regular boots. Then moving into the mid-game, go to the regular scuba tank with a sort of reinforced suit later on 
And if we really want to go absolutely nuts, throw in some sort of exoskeletal diving suit that could aid you in underwater combat. Of course, once you've got your first bit of kit though, why would you need anything more? A little extra oxygen or mobility is nice, but it's not necessary. And this is where the second stage comes in. Introduce pressure. Giving different suits or even different creatures pressure resistance would allow survivors to venture into the water early in the game without being able to rush immediately to the deepest areas for the best loot, resources or tames. If a player isn't interested, they simply wait for the late game as they do now, but if they are, then the aquatic world would gradually open up as they become more prepared for it. Number 2. Biome Diversity Why is the ocean treated as a single biome? It really holds back the potential and helps contribute towards the navigation and terrain issues we've mentioned previously. Some maps handle this better than others, but greater biodiversity would help distinguish regions and bring a greater need and desire to explore. From tropical vibrant coral reefs to volcanic vents and arctic perils, just as on land certain resources or tames could be restricted to certain areas, and temperature could be further used to limit access to the richer regions until later on. As far as improvements go, this is probably the one that would require the most work, hence being so high on the list. New biomes need new terrain assets, new creatures to populate them. That's most likely why we haven't already got varied biomes underwater, to be honest, because there's simply not enough creatures. And why is there not enough creatures? Because the interest in the ocean just isn't there. It's a big cyclical issue, one that I feel is further exacerbated by... Number one... Purpose. The single biggest thing that could be done to improve the ocean is give players more reason to visit. That's what this all comes down to. A few maps have an artifact or a cave underwater which may require you to grab a single water tame to traverse, but there's nothing really beyond that. Nobody's going, oh, I need a Meg for this part, I, I need a, a Moser for that. But on land you'll have your transport, your gatherers, your cave runners, your boss fighters, any number of tames, and you'll keep exploring and looking for new ones to improve your collection. How often does someone go looking for a better aquatic mount though, or even an additional one? There's so little to do down there that usually one tame is enough, and we all know it'll be a Basilo because of the Nidaria anyway. If we look back to the island, there was two water caves, which is already more reason to go in than most maps but it also provides the best loot and several rarer resources. But this hasn't stayed true for the later maps, although obviously we have to discount most of the story ones because the majority don't even have an ocean. Putting more unique resources down there would certainly be a step in the right direction. Oil and black pearls should return to the seas, but how about adding some new things too? We could have some deep sea minerals, maybe kelp in the shallows, Perhaps throw some element veins in the deepest, most dangerous areas to drive the taming of a strong underwater gatherer, and put some high quality loot into the well guarded caves, so you can't just grab the fastest ride and be done with it. More reasons to keep going back is the single biggest thing the ocean needs. Without that, it will always be an underutilized and empty biome. And there we go, my thoughts on how to improve the ocean. It's a tricky thing because we could argue why does the ocean deserve all this? Why should it get a sort of handout to make it more desirable when the other biomes don't? And there's no real answer to that. Circling back around to what I said at the start, it'll never be treated the same way as the rest of the map by players. And due to the versatility of most of the aquatic tames and even the semi-aquatics, there'll never be any real need to keep taming more creatures. Right now, it's mostly just wasted potential. A large wet border to most of the maps that serves very little purpose, but a lot of us would like to see that change. And on that we come to the end, thank you all very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.